What's up YouTube? This is the Wisco Motor Channel. My name is Chad and on this video we are going to be uh, we're going to start installing the table for the dinette. I've got the two pieces of wood that are going to make the base mount for the or the bed mount for the board that will be lowered to create the bed. Uh, those are going to be made out of a special piece of wood which you'll uh, find out about here in just a minute. And then uh, we're going to install the pedestal base, the pedestal itself, and then the bottom part of the table will get installed and then uh, after the epoxy is done for the top part of the table I'll bring that up and we'll install that as well we'll show you the complete finished project of the diamond let's get started with the uh, bed rests I guess we'll call it um, I am going to uh, cut this piece of African mahogany what I have left of this piece of African mahogany down uh, to the correct length to be the supports for the bottom part of the table, which will be the drop down portion of this, uh, of this table that will create the bed. And the only thing I've done to this, um, since I put the uh, pedestal mount in place is to put a uh, little bit of a chamfer. You can see I put a five degree chamfer on all of the, uh, all the edges, just to make the top part of the table easier to come off uh, because that piece is exactly the same size as the top piece and with the trim that I put on around the top part of the table, that is, was just gonna get stuck every single time, especially in the summertime when things expand. I'd be really surprised if I could even get that, get the top of the table off. So that five degree chamfer will allow the top of the part, top part of the table just set there um, and lift off easily. And then back to this African mahogany, uh, this was used as a um, this was a, oh, probably a six inch wide or so piece that I cut um, to be the hog of a wooden boat that I built. Now the hog is a, a piece of wood that is mounted above the keel uh, on a wood boat. And uh, it's usually a nice dense hardwood. Um, and that's what I used. So African mahogany, I have about a one inch by one inch piece left. I'm going to cut this into 46 inch sections with my box saw and then put an angle, a 45 degree angle on the ends so people don't uh, rub their legs on the corner and hurt themselves. So that's all I'm doing today. Uh, cut these uh, down and then uh, show you what they look like finished. So there we have it, two uh, pieces of African mahogany, which is kind of cool to use leftover pieces from another wood boat project to uh, incorporate into a current boat project. So I'm pretty excited about using these and getting these put in. So I've got, uh, uh, you can imagine what I'm trying to do here. This is, these are gonna mount like this on either bench and then the, the tabletop will mount We'll sit down on these to uh, make a bed. So, just a little bit of wood cleanup to do with these, and we'll take them up to the boat, get those things mounted. Well, as you can see, I'm back up on the boat. Uh, I will consider us in the home stretch of getting this dinette done. So, well, all right, what I'm going to work on now is getting the um, resting rail mounted for the part of the table that will drop down to form a lounge or bed. It's going to go right about there. I need to measure the uh, thickness of the plywood. I do believe it's exactly three quarters, but need to go do that and then 
we'll clamp this in place, drill some holes, throw some screws in, do this side as well. And this part will be done. And then we got to do the, the uh, pedestal mount. We do have three quarter inch plywood. I mean, I knew it was three quarter inch plywood, but always verify. So we're gonna measure three quarters of an inch down. Right here in the center. Okay, there's three quarters of an inch. We'll get a clamp on this thing somehow. Okay, and just double check this. Three quarters of an inch. And we'll drill. Okay. it now that I know we have three quarters of an inch in the middle all I gotta do is rotate this a little bit and set it at three quarters down on this end and that should give us three quarters of an inch on this end but I'm gonna do this in first because of course the wood can always flex a little bit Even though we pulled the fabric down, we still get a little bit of tufting here, but that's right. The board will sit down in there just fine. All right. Side's so done for the able to sit down on and uh, just repeat it for the other side and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done okay so we got both of the rest rails in place and I've got the tabletop the bottom part of the tabletop here that will hopefully slide right into place just like that Perfect. All right, now you might be asking why, why is this not level with this? Uh, I, I mounted these rest rails down three quarters of an inch off the bottom of this board just, to, just so that the cushions that will go here, which are gonna be the backrests for either side, will have kind of a channel to sit in. They will sit down in this channel so they don't shift in any way. Okay. Yeah, plenty sturdy. There, that's all my weight on it. So if I can sit in the middle of that and not hear a crack, it'll be just fine to lounge on, dogs to be on, friends, kids to be on, whatever. Okay, last step, get the post mount, mount it on the floor, put the post in, we'll put the table on. Base is installed. We take our post, set it in there, and then you rotate this until it tightens. It's tight. Take our tabletop. Yeah. Table 
bolts up in place. All right, it's a little wobbly. Let's see. better of course it will all right i'm gonna have to come up with a solution here but in the meantime yeah, yeah that's pretty wobbly It's, it's all in the base. So, it's also a little bit tight to get in and out of. But, I mean, as far as the height goes, comfort, I mean, it's going to be another little bit higher when the table, when the top of the table gets here. Hmm, I'm going to have to figure out something to stabilize this. Something connected to the wall over here. Kind of like what I'm going to do with the bench, with the top of the bench over there. There's going to be a corner brace I'm going to put in tomorrow over on that side right there. Yeah, I didn't expect that. All right, well, uh, I mean, we can get it in and out. That's not that bad, but that's not that big of a deal. I mean, in the meantime, I mean, I'm happy enough with it. I'm just going to figure out how to stabilize the tabletop a little bit. Here's that, uh, that corner brace. I'm not going to show installing this, but it's going to go right there. I'll do that tomorrow. So until next time. Well, it is next time the next day. Um, I've got the corner brace installed. I did have to cut the fabric right there. I cut a little flap down because I couldn't get, I couldn't get the drill to go through the fabric and the batting without totally binding up. So unfortunately um, I had to make a slit to just have clear access to the wood uh, in order to, to uh, drill the hole for the uh, carriage bolts that I use there. I will use another piece of fabric and try to match it up as best I can uh, just to cover that section of the, uh, that brace. It's just a giant gate hinge is all it is. Um, but I'll cover this section of the gate hinge with a new, a new piece of fabric. That will stay exposed on the wall. I think it, it kind of looks cool. On the back side, um, it's just, uh, I don't know if you can really see it, fender washers and um, metal lock washers. I keep that in place. So that is nice, nice and solid now. And then my solution to keep the table from swiveling and uh, being all wonky like I, like I just showed you. You can see it still has a little bit of play in it, but I did install a couple of latches, swivel latches down here that uh, will keep things fairly in place I mean it's not it's not gonna move you're not gonna break it or anything but you can see it's it's all in the in the post in the tabletop post so that's it for now until I bring the um, the top part of the table up we'll get that installed and I'll show you the final result of a dinette without cushions I'm not worried about the cushions right now but uh, We'll do, I'll do cushions at some point. Maybe I'll do those by the time the, the tabletop gets installed and we'll wrap this whole thing up and it'll be all nice and pretty and finished. But, but for now, um, be a few more weeks and uh, I'll be back up with the tabletop uh, to finish this project out. And I've got a lot more stuff to do on the boat right now, so I gotta stop videoing. It's all small stuff, not videoing any of it, uh, but I'll do after the, uh, um, after all the little projects are done, I will go through the boat and show you what I have done to the boat on in the off season outside of the major projects that I am making videos on. Okay, well, we have a little bit of uh, episode overlap here because in the end of the last episode, I pretty much proclaimed that this table was done. I did, however, leave the door open 
to possibly doing another layer of epoxy, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Reason being, if I run my fingers over the, uh, the north part of the table here, I can feel those little burrs of wood coming up through the epoxy. There's also a ridge right here that I can easily feel. And uh, those two things, I just don't like. It's not, uh, it's not perfect. And not that I, I mean, I, I, I try to seek perfection, but nothing I ever do is perfect. But I'd like this to be as close to perfect as possible. So let me show you a little bit of a closer view of what this table looks like. And I think you'll understand why I'm going to do another layer of $70 epoxy. All right, so if we look close there, you can see that ridge right there easily. And it goes away in the middle. It's nice and smooth here. So the, the, the board, the bottom board, the piece of plywood, it's got a little bit of a curve this way to it. So the epoxy in the middle, nice and smooth. The epoxy out here, ridge. Also, as I use the light to show you, there, right there, you can see it. These little, you can hear it too. The little pieces of wood fibers kind of just poked up through the epoxy. And I don't want to feel that. I don't want to see it. I don't want to feel it. So this whole table is going to get sanded with 220 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to put a whole new layer of epoxy on it. Then it will be perfect. All right. Let's make this look ugly. I was hoping that'd be the fast way to do it. This is a sticky back <laughs> pad that I was gonna try and just hope, hopefully just, never mind. I'll just do this. That appears to be significantly and sufficiently scuffed. So now I gotta wipe it all down. I might go get the uh, go get a mini vac just to get most of the dust, and then I'll wipe it off with a damp cloth, dry it, and then I think we're ready to pour some epoxy again. Now I mix up some epoxy and we go for perfection. Okay, here we go. Last layer of epoxy. It looks milky, but it's gonna turn out clear.
gonna let the uh, air bubbles continue to come to the surface. It's looking pretty good, but you can still see areas like right in here. I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not, but there's still air bubbles right in here. But overall, I mean, it's looking really nice. And this layer was definitely needed to make this table complete and perfect. I'll continue to work the uh, torch to get all of the tiny little minuscule air bubbles out of this table so that it looks like a piece of glass laying on top of the, of the uh, plywood. All right, well, I'm back up at, uh, at the boat up in Sturgeon Bay. I've got uh, the car unloaded this morning and got all my stuff back here on the swim platform. Brought uh, the table, it's gonna get installed. Brought the uh, VIP room, state, VIP stateroom carpet, a box full of projects. The uh, pieces of King Starboard that I'm going to use to uh, make a bar that's gonna hang off the rails up there and the gray cabinets that are going to get installed. So I've got uh, pretty much two full days up here to get started on this stuff. Um, but uh, the purpose of this video is this table installation. So let's start with that. The table has arrived. All these little fuzzies on the side here from having it covered up with a blanket. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I put the table on, I have this little tear up here that I gotta repair. So I'm gonna throw a piece of fabric on that, and we'll put the table on, and wrap this video up. Okay, got that patch put on right there. Can't see the tear anymore. So we'll get the uh, lower part of the table put back on and then we'll install the top. There we go. The tabletop is installed. The dinette is now complete except for the cushions. It's nice and sturdy. Sturdy enough anyway. Moves a little bit. You can see the the hinges underneath here, keeping it secure up against the wall. So there we have it. Just need cushions and we have a dinette. All right, well, there you have it. The dinette's installed and uh, I've got to finish up the cushions, obviously, and put the door on. Uh, that's a little side project. Not going to not gonna video that. Just using some magnets to stick that door back in place. but. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this video series. I know it was a six week long uh, uh, series, but uh, I think it, it turned out really, really nice. And uh, I'll show the cushions obviously when they're done in another video, uh, just kind of as a as a side note, just to know how, you, how we finished it out. They'll probably be like a, a color that'll match something in the in the fabric. Um, just cause we're, I don't want to overwhelm the boat with the blue color. So, uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, send me some comments. And if you want to be notified when I post new videos like this one or any other boat project, we've got a lot of them coming up. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you next time on the Wisco Boater Channel. Happy boating, everybody.